Okay, what we have here is a 172 scale V1 type Japanese submarine of World War II. This one's of I-25. It's a fairly famous submarine. It did all sorts of things from being the Pearl Harbor, uh, reconnoitering Sydney in Australia, Melbourne and Tasmania and Hobart. Also, the aircraft on it was the first aircraft to ever bond mainland America. Uh, it's radio controlled, it's 72 scale, um, it's fully operational, it works on the snort system. So let's have a look at a bit closer. The two decks on this are held in place by grooves and spring pressure which is on the inside of the hull. They're fairly easy to remove, I'll show you how that's done. First remove the rear one. Disconnect the hose. Then we remove the forward one. Easy, not very hard. Okay, working from the bow of the vessel, we first we come to the air. Uh, it's a cylinder of gas, butane gas, that's used as an emergency blow system. The cylinder itself is easy to remove, it just slips out and removes like that. When it's inserted again, it automatically loads. So you pull it out. Turns it off, push it in, turns it on and it's ready for the next mission. Underneath that is the battery compartment area. There is two charge jacks there for recharging both batteries. Also in there is a receiver and the servo which operates the two air pumps. The air pumps for filling the ballast tank with air or sucking the air out. I did it that way because it seems to be a bit more controllable and I don't, it doesn't tend to leak so I can set it any sort of buoyancy and it stays there pretty well much. Moving further back we have a level which comes in handy for setting things up even if you're not at home you always know where the level is. I've set it up so that the boat's level um, with the level being level if that makes any sense who knows. Alongside of that, I don't know whether you can see it or not, that's the switch, that's the on and off switch. I turn it on. Yes, yeah, a little further back from the switch is an air valve. I use that if I'm going to be going into any deep water. I can pressurise the hull, which makes up for any differences in air pressure and water pressure. It tends to keep the boat drier a lot longer. Underneath all that you have the twin motors with the 3 to 1 reduction gearboxes, the speed control of course, the three servos and in there underneath that lot is the two air pumps. The emergency gas system which I showed you first off is operated by this valve here. The valve is also connected to a pin which when released We'll set the buoy, an emergency buoy off and the emergency buoy will float to the surface. There's a 50 pound braking line on that, tethered to the hull so that if the boat does get lost that'll come up and I'll know where the boat is hopefully because I tend to believe that the boats normally bump into things head first. So the chances are if, it's get, if it gets caught on anything or under anything the stern will still be hanging out and the boy should be able to pop to the top. Yes, the boat's designed around the snort system. It works very good. I can stay at periscope depth for as long as I like. I can go deeper if I wish. Or I can ride at the correct water line when it's out of the water, which not, a, not all the other systems can do that. So. Also with the emergency gas system, I can over ballast it so that it sinks down to the bottom and then by adjusting the valve carefully, I can set the buoyancy up so that it could be two, maybe one and a half to two feet underneath the water and stay there. 
until I blow it and get the periscope above the water and then use the snort system. I'm happy with the way it works, I'm happy with the way it's turned out. It seems to perform a lot better than the prototype did, than the original did, so that was what I was after. I was after something that was going to be easy to use, fun to use and performed a little bit better than the original. Um, yeah, hope you like it and bye for now.